Three, two, one, go. Well, as uh, we sit here on the fireplace, um, it's Wednesday afternoon, and it does happen to be April Fool's Day, and I'll get into that in a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, you haven't heard from me or from us for a while, all you Denver friends, folks that we love so much. But uh, on this April Fool's Day, we wanted to bring you a little bit of music and a little bit of encouragement out of God's Word, and a few announcements maybe about Denver Friends and and um, what's going to be happening here in the next few days. Um, I am, we are sitting on the same fireplace where I did my first fireside chat, and I will tell you before I finish my little introduction that we're going to sing two songs that are familiar to you, and even though we can't hear you, we want you to sing along with us, uh, if nothing else, to cover up all of our boo-boos here and there. Um, so we're going to sing Blessed Be, uh, be Your Name um, and Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. Uh, uh, blessed Be the Name. So the hymn, uh, Blessed Be the Name. So if you want to find a hymn right now or if you want to figure out a way to get your words together, that's fine. If nothing else, you can join us on the chorus. And then we'll sing the chorus, Blessed Be Your Name. <clears throat> now, if you remember about 10 days ago, when I did a Facebook live chat, I reminded you that singing is good for you, and singing releases endorphins. So um, Phil and I were talking about this the other day, Phil Berge and I, and he said, you know, we, we've done that, and it's a little awkward even for me and Kay to just sit there and sing with whoever's doing their thing. But it's good. It's good, good and it's good for you. So sing along with us on these familiar songs. Uh, I will say that behind us, I moved a picture from one side of our room to the other side, uh, this is something that I got in Africa, in um, Mozambique, a couple, about a year and a half ago. And I don't know, I just thought, you know, if nothing else, it's colorful, and it speaks of community. Uh, here's all these people in this African community. Um, would that we were all that skinny, but we're not. So anyway, the only other thing I want to say by way of introduction is, yes, Janet is feeling much better. So many of you have asked, and so... Hopefully, you'll figure that out when she sings. Two weeks ago, she couldn't have sang with me. And so, here we are now. Uh, which one are we doing first? Blessed be your name. We're going to do the chorus. Blessed be your name. My heart will 
singing along. We needed it here and there, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we don't do this sort of thing very often, so it's been fun. Has it been fun, Janet? Oh, a blast. Yes, <laughs> getting this together. <clears throat> this one will be a little easier for us. Is that all the words we're singing? Okay, okay. I'll praise to him who reigns above. I'll praise to him Above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, and he might man read. Oh, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Everybody, oh, blessed be be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord, Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, once ruined by the Salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Different, his name shall be the counselor, the mighty prince of peace of all earth's kingdoms, conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Thus be the name, bless be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, Janet's gonna leave us. Bye, Janet. And I'm gonna talk for a couple minutes. Um, do a little fireside chat here. Um, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, today is April Fool's Day. I don't know when you'll listen to this. Um, I guess I could, I don't know. I know I can't say that you'll be a fool if you don't listen on April Fool's Day, but you won't be. Um, and, you know, if you look up the origins of April Fool's Day, there's at least a half a dozen explanations on the origin. So I won't take the time to go into any of those because they get kind of complicated, actually. Nobody's really sure, to be, to be truthful, what the origins of this day are. Um, I can tell you this. Um, it's not a public holiday in any country except Odessa in Ukraine. In the country of Ukraine, there's actually a public holiday um, on April Fool's Day. And on that day, pranks are often followed by this saying, April 1st, trust nobody. April 1st, trust nobody. 
Uh, and then just uh, one uh, kind of a quick story that really doesn't have an ending. You'll have to figure out the ending. Um, when Janet and I years ago attended uh, Northwest Fringe Church, which has become Neighborhood Fringe Church, there were a couple different families, um, several families that had come over from Denver Friends to the Northwest. Uh, one of them is back uh, at Denver Friends Church as we speak. Um, another family um, was uh, there with us at Northwest and after that was on staff at Denver Friends Church. Now, I'm obviously not going to tell you who these people are. You get to figure it out. Uh, but I will tell you this. Every year, the junior high would um, have a fundraiser. And we had a great evening together. We would sing and uh, together and tell stories, but primarily we would tell stories and people would be nominated for a fool of the year. So you could either tell a story on yourself or on somebody else. And I nominate so-and-so for fool of the year, and this is what they did to deserve that. So one of the people that I'm, I mentioned uh, who was at Neighborhood Friends with us um, was nominated for fool of the year. Um, didn't win, but I believe he was nominated for um, a squirrel jumped into, I think it was the dryer. It could have been the washer. Anyway, washer or dryer, one of the two. And they didn't know it. And so they closed the lid and started it up, apparently. I think it was the washing machine. You'll have to ask to get the real details. And I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I will tell you this. This person probably has the most joint replacements of anybody in our church. Uh, and it is a he. I think he has five different joint replacements. Maybe one of them got done twice. But at any rate, uh, you can just try to figure that one out and ask him about it. The other one, who was someone who was on staff, um, and she actually won Fool of the Year. So they would put a crown on the person and a big robe, and I don't know if we sang a song or not, but we, we would have a lot of fun telling a lot of stories um, and, uh, this particular person, um, I believe what happened was they put, um, uh, they go, oh, I know what it was. She, she was in the middle of fixing her hair and the insurance salesman came to the door and she went and answered the door and went through a whole, uh, interview with this person with her hair half done, not realizing that it was that way and didn't realize it until she got, he left and she went back into the bathroom and, ah, there she was with her hair half done. So, uh, anyway, fool of the year. Um, and as far as being fools is concerned, Proverbs 1.7 says this uh, from the New Living Translation. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. The message version of that is, start with God. The first step in learning is bowing to God. He's, trans, he's, he's paraphrasing what it means to fear the Lord as bowing to God. Start with God. The first step in learning is, is bowing to God, having a deep respect, the proper respect for who he is. Only fools thumb their noses at such wisdom and learning Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, some of you remember in our series on Hebrews, um, we went over some verses in chapter 12 about how, how to live a life of faith, um, how to um, um, you know follow Jesus and be faithful. There's a whole series of explanations and good clues and uh, directions in Hebrews chapter 12 concerning that. And one of them is this idea of not despising the Lord's discipline. In fact, it's the main uh, theme of the rest of that chapter after you get past the first few verses. But in he Hebrews 12.10, God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. So do we want to share in his holiness or not? I hope every one of you does. And so it's good to remember as we pursue that, that he disciplines us at times he shapes us, he molds us, he corrects us, he lovingly exhorts us, he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline, now this is a quote from the Old Testament, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees, make level paths for your feet, 
so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Uh, in Romans chapter 1, um, I'm going to read three verses here, starting at uh, verse 18. Uh, pretty strong statement here at the beginning, but this is from Romans 1. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth with their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he's made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. They began to think up, and here's where the foolish part comes, or being fools. They began to think up foolish ideas about what God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So one of the things, obviously, that that scripture teaches us, among many other things, is it's foolish to think, to think wrongly about God. And during these days, when we have a very unique situation that we're facing with this coronavirus and all that it's meant for our culture, um, there's many ideas, maybe even in your own mind or heart, there's many ideas around us about what's happening and why, who God is, how he plays into it all. Just remember, it's foolish to think up your own ideas. It's better to uh, look, just look at him chiefly through his word and what he teaches you about who he really is. And sometimes we have to dig a little bit to get to that. Um, but it's also foolish to worship uh, idols, any idols of any kind. It mentions those that are made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. But you and I both know that virtually anything in our lives can become an idol that we worship above the living God. So instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worshiped idols and therefore became fools and foolish. It's not always bad to be a, a fool. Uh, in fact, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4, when he was explaining his way of life in Christ as, a, as an apostle, he uh, says, we are fools for Christ. He's talking about himself and the colleagues that he had in ministry. And he, 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 you'll have to read the whole chapter for yourself, but basically he uses that phrase and says, we are fools for Christ, very clearly. And part of what he means is the, the, the way that we live for Jesus to many seems foolish. Uh, and, it, and it's foolish to preach a message that will only get you beat up and or killed. Uh, and he talks about suffering hardships and all the things that he goes through. But the sense of it is, I don't care about that. I don't care about being a fool in the eyes of the world, for, for Christ. Romans 1, God shows his anger from heaven. I already read that. I won't read that again. How about that? Um, so, in Ukraine, they say, and they pull a prank on April Fool's Day. April 1st, trust nobody. I suppose it's a little bit like trick-or-treat. April 1st, trust nobody. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, you know, trust nobody. Um... Scripture's full of encouragement to trust, specifically to trust in the Lord. And, you know, in these days, again, do you trust everything you hear on the news? Do you, can you trust all the information you're getting? You can trust some of it. Um, and what causes a lot of fear in us and a lot of panic and, is when we, we hear things um, and put maybe too much trust in the, all these messages that we're getting uh, all these different ideas about what all this means and don't trust in primarily in the Lord first and foremost and last, <laughs> you know, maybe in between we struggle with trusting others or trusting information or trusting what's going on. But first and foremost, let our foundation be trusting the Lord and let in the end be what we do. Trust the Lord. Proverbs three, five is just one of many, many scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's a, a common um, uh, verse that we've learned in Sunday school and, and quoted often. 
Uh, and, and it's a good one to go back to. I mean, in fact, I've had to have the Lord remind me in these last few days, Frank, trust in me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. That's foolish. Psalm uh, 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy. And with my song, I praise him. You know, maybe if you don't find that you have a song in your heart, a lot of us don't necessarily have a song or we just sang a little bit and we know every little mistake we made. We know everything that wasn't quite perfect. Um, and sometimes we all feel like I, I, I don't have a song to sing that sounds right. But the, the essence of this verse is, you know what? My heart trusts in him and he helps me. And therefore my heart leaps for joy and with my song, I praise him. So if you don't feel like you have a song in your heart, let alone your lips, you might ask, well, is that partially because I'm not trusting in him? Because the, the testimony of the psalmist here is, he's my strength and my shield. I trust in him. My heart trusts in him. And I find that as I trust in him, there's joy. And as I have joy, I just want to sing and praise him. Psalm 112, praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. This is real important, the rest of this, in the context of uh, our sheltering in place, our economy that's that's really going to suffer, and all because of this thing we keep hearing about over and over again, COVID-19, the coronavirus, all the rest. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. How much bad news have you heard? How much bad news have you felt? Those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless. They can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Ever they will have influence and honor. So I don't even want to say happy Fool's Day, unless you're bound and determined to be a fool for Christ. Not foolish in his name, but be a fool for him. Um, uh, and have a happy April Fool's Day and, and on and on every day uh, as you trust in him. Um, don't trust necessarily in me or uh, in the people or the messages around you. We, we do need to trust one another, but there comes a point where we know that ultimately the one that we can trust, the only one that we can trust is the Lord. Uh, so that's as short as I probably need to be. Um, this weekend, we are working on at least recording something uh, as a, a worship time that you can join in on Sunday morning. Um, so the technical aspects that are, are being worked out. So keep keep on a lookout for that. Uh, also, obviously, you know, we're thankful for answers to prayer on many people's behalf. And we want to continue to pray for um, uh, Jay and Amor Hollowell and Yadira and Aaron Burnett and the boys. And, and I know there's plenty of prayer requests we could go through. Th those are two that have been standing out, I know, in our prayer lives. There are many others. Joy Deeds has been in and out of the hospital. And there are others that you and I know of. We have another good friend, a couple of friends, who uh, are on uh, ventilators and are struggling. So, uh, Lord, we just pray for each other and for our friends. Pray for those who are quarantined right now and hid away and don't have much contact. For If, it, if it's caused loneliness, Lord, I pray that you would be their helper, their comforter, be close to them in every way. Um, and so we thank you for Denver Friends Church. Help us to find ways to continue to connect to each other. And uh, Lord, um, deliver us from being fools um, because we don't trust in you. And instead, uh, to, to learn the secret in these days, uh, one thing we need to do is just learn to trust. And so help us with that, we pray. And I pray you'd bless every person who hears this. And may the words that we have said and the words we'll sing now, the words we've already sung, um, help them and encourage them along their way. So Janet's going to come back.
and we're going to sing an old hymn that I first heard as a high school student. Um, I was babysitting. It's one of those things I just never will forget where I heard it for the first time. It wasn't one we sang at church, but my um, I babysat as a young teenager for my brother and his wife. They're three little kids, and they had a record album um, with an old Baptist preacher singing on it, and he sang this song, and even as a kid, I just loved the message here, and you know, we sang earlier, I, I was hoping you would see that it was obvious, thank you, um, in the context of our lives right now, blessed be your name in the land that's plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow, and they have flown for a long time, they still do actually, but uh, they may not, as long as we'd like them to, streams of abundance, but blessed be your name in the midst of that, that that's, that's expressing trust. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. How many people are in a desert place walking through a wilderness? Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. Uh, blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me and when the world's all that it should be. Then the next verse, the last verse says, Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. You give and you take away. So this, this song is kind of in that same vein. Um, that uh, uh, about how the Lord is our shepherd and he leads us along as his dear children <clears throat> and how we get through that. And one way we get through it is through the blood of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. So God leads us along, written by G.A. Young in 1903 and sung today by Janet and Frank Pena. You ready? In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads His dear children along where the waters cool flow, days the weary ones feet, God leads children alone. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. In the night season and all the day long Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright God leads his dear children along Sometimes in the valley in darkest of night God leads his dear children alone. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. In the night season and all the day long Though sorrows befall us and Satan oppose God leads his dear children alone Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes God leads his dear children alone. Away from the mire, away from the clay, God leads his dear children alone. Away up in glory, eternity's day, God leads children alone. Some through 
the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long in the night season and all the day long love you all we hope you see us soon again. We hope we see you soon again. Anything to add? I'm not a talker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Or as they say in Brazil, ciao. Deus abençoe. God bless you. The end.